Cow fans, Ashley here from ZooMed. Today we're going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to set up the new ZooMed Reptivator. ZooMed's Reptivator is a state-of-the-art incubator that can be used to hatch a variety of reptiles and amphibians. With its easy-to-program interface and self-gauging temperature controls, the Reptivator is the perfect tool for both new and experienced breeders. We breed a lot of animals here at ZooMed, and incubation is naturally an important part of the process. We currently have 12 Reptivators in use here with over 175 eggs from a wide range of reptiles. The Reptivator provides the most vital element of the incubation process, heat. Without a proper temperature, the embryo of fertile eggs won't develop and mature. Now that we've gone over the importance of incubation, let's prepare our Reptivator. The Reptivator consists of three main pieces. The first piece, the base, has a molded reservoir that allows water to be added. This helps create a more humid environment inside the incubator. ZooMed's Reptivator uses recycled styrofoam made in the USA. The foam sponge insert allows for greater water retention for cases where high humidity is needed or if the incubator will be unattended for long periods of time. The hood contains the main heating unit as well as the control panel for programming the temperature scale, temperature settings, and alarm settings. The clear plastic design allows you to view the eggs without having to disturb the microclimate inside. When setting up, it's recommended to position the incubator in a cool area in your home where the temperature is fairly consistent. Add water to the channels of the base's reservoir. Make sure to fill only to the top of the channels to prevent spilling through the ventilation holes. This step may or may not be necessary depending on the needs of your eggs. Place the foam insert inside the incubator with the flat side facing down. Now place the hood on top of the base with the control panel facing up. Once you've plugged in the Reptivator, the display on the control panel will activate. From here, first set whether you want the Reptivator to display in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Do this by pressing and holding down the button labeled Warmer, then press the button labeled Cooler to switch between the two. Once you've set the display, press the warmer button to set the default temperature. The word heat should pop up on the display. From here, adjust the temperature with the warmer and cooler buttons accordingly. Once you've decided on the temperature, let the menu sit for five seconds for it to accept the input. The temperature on the Reptivator can be set anywhere between 59 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The red LED on the display will light up whenever the heating element is running. A flashing LED indicates the Reptivator's pulse proportional thermostat, giving off pulses of heat to stabilize the incubator's temperature. Next, we'll set up the alarm function. With the alarm, the display will flash if the temperature drops outside the set levels. Press the cooler button to access these controls. A picture of two bells on the right-hand side of the display should pop up to indicate the correct menu. Set the number of degrees you want for the alarm and allow the menu to sit for five seconds to accept the command. Now that we've prepared the Reptivator, let's go over some tips on how to set up your eggs for incubation. First off, while the Reptivator's thermometer works fine for gauging and setting the overall temperature of the incubator, it's always a good idea to have a secondary thermometer set up in close proximity to the eggs. This allows for a more accurate incubation temperature. ZooMed's digital thermometers are perfect for this task. When it does come time and your pet is displaying signs of nesting or egg laying behavior, make sure to allow her to finish nesting before attempting to remove them. Doing so beforehand may cause unnecessary stress for your pet. When you have found the nest, carefully remove each egg without rotating it. Reptile eggs should not be turned over, so dig carefully when searching for eggs. When using an incubation container in unison with the Reptivator, make sure to research the different varieties of incubation media and choose the one that will work best for your pet's eggs. If you're using a secondary thermometer, placing it directly inside the incubation container will help produce the most accurate readings. Record keeping is a very important part of the incubation process. Here at ZooMed, we label our containers with the name of the species that laid the egg, the date they were found, and the number of eggs that we found in the clutch. 
It's a good idea to check your Reptivator at least a couple of times a week. Here at ZooMed, our Reptivators are checked daily for new hatchlings and to ensure that the humidity levels are correct. Be sure to research the particular needs and care tips for the type of eggs you plan on incubating. We hope you've enjoyed this video on ZooMed's Reptivator. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or contact us at zoomed at zoomed.com. Until next time, I'm Ashley from ZooMed. Take care. Please leave a comment below or send an email to zoomed at zoomed.com. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and check us out on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter accounts for more information. Get serious. Get ZooMed.